ba 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 do I, I just stop by singing a song? That's all I need to do. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and Our stream today on this fine 13th of November, 2023. I hope you are having a wonderful week. We'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week's been good. I'm on the, uh, you know, there's a sine wave of uh, where the peaks are wear back and the drops are it's so over. I'm on the wear back phase. We are, we are so back. We're... We're vibing. I'm learning all about Gen Z, Gen Alpha, Linguo. I'm like, I'm so borderline Gen Z. Greetings, blub. How's it going? I'm so borderline Gen Z, but I don't know if I'm actually Gen Z or if I'm apparently a millennial. I'm like right on the tisk. The tisk? This cusp and tip combined. Uh, let us jump straight into the video game. You'll get there eventually. There you go. Da, 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 da. Skip through a bit. We are playing Tomb Raider 3. It's the same game as last time, uh, <laughs> but with a little more progress. So uh, I have done some progress on uh, my prep stream. And uh, we have now arrived in the Nevada desert in an attempt to find the second of the four pieces. We will be, I know, what a surprise. Uh, already we are fighting vultures because, of course, what do you do in Nevada except for kill the local wildlife? In fact, you're gonna be absolutely ecstat ecstatic. Oh my gosh. Damn vultures. Ecstatic is probably not the right term when I describe the things I will be shooting at in this level. Although there's a lot of snakes. Uh, I thought there were plenty of snakes in the last stream. There's plenty of this. Find all these, uh... All the new graphics cuts and reselling for high prices. Ooh! Ooh! Also, there's quicksand. It's not very quick. It's like the mud in the, the previous world. Uh, but yeah, I did, I did another run through earlier. So hopefully, I'm not caught out here. But look at that cheeky, cheeky snake. But yeah, no, tell me all about the, the graphics card. Those vultures luckily got got F when the crypto collapsed. That is true. Oh, but as in as in that's what the vultures are doing. We'd we'd use the term like scalpers here, but yeah, it's like it's the same principle of just like of just like legit I hate. I absolutely hate you know, the crazy results of like is that a this is a this is a, a block. I'm just noticing. Hmm. I've run right past this. Uh oh oh need oh. shotgun rounds. I'm gonna go a bit gung ho with the the tools I've got for a very particular reason, but you could probably guess what it is. Or I mentioned it last week. One of the two. Um, but yeah, I wish there was a brand new graphics card coming out. Um, I'm going to save right here because I know there's a secret and it's not the easiest to grab. Because what you got to do is that... Also, yes, this is the test, by the way. If you're running the game using, like, DG Voodoo, this is the test I, I present this area. You're supposed to just know that you can drop down, like, kind of here. Like, that barbed wire is off to the side. But if you, if you are playing with um, Pexoto or something else, and you're not emulating the texture filtering quite right, uh, you will just not be able to see the actual wire. Because it's, in the texture, it's just like it's one black pixel wide. And so it'll just, it'll just get filtered out. It just thinks, eh, it's not there. Which is very odd. But yeah, it means that that barbed wire is virtually impossible to see. Purely because of texture filtering. So, I highly recommend. Throw, out, throw in DG Voodoo. Do your work. Spot that there's barbed wire here. It only comes up really in this level as well. So I can push this off to the side, and we should be able to make our way out. There we go. Um, yeah, no, I. Oh, oh there we go. 
But yeah, I'm hoping that the graphics cards uh, come down a bit because we're getting a bit caught out by um, the the tariffs and stuff kicking in real hard. So things like the 4090 and the 4080, um, maybe a, in, in relation, it just just I don't know exactly. But uh, since that China is apparently not allowed to buy 4090s, or maybe they are, I'm not too sure. They're currently getting a bit scalped right now. Um, also, hi there, Jet. How are you doing? Woo. I love some of this platforming. It feels very, like, the triangles make it feel a lot more authentic, I guess. There's a bush. I think you tell us that if there's a bush, just think that there's a, there's a snake in it, because it probably is, like, nine times out of ten. And that music. That music will be there every other time. Is he sitting on, like, it's an item, or is that just, like... This is torso sticking out, okay. Um, but fortunately, at least, people, the average person shouldn't really be buying 4080s or 4090s. Uh, I think if you know you need one, you're a very particular person. Um, even I feel like I, I use my my graphics card a bit. It's like, eh, 4070 Ti kind of does the job. Uh, the only downside is I wish NVIDIA released higher capacity VRAM cards for... Um, one, a little bit generally, because it seems that, I don't know, games are just going gung-ho on it. Uh, and, uh, but also, for, uh, machine learning stuff, it'd be very, very nice. Because, unfortunately, it's for NVIDIA, I'm, like, I'm in that camp where it's like, I'd love a 4070 Ti with more VRAM. Because I think a 4060 Ti isn't powerful enough, and I think a 4070 Ti is, like, uh, I'm still having to work with the lower VRAM for my, my workloads. And I, th and I think NVIDIA is banking on the fact that I would be like, Oh, I guess I'll have to buy a 4080. Which currently costs just as much as buying both the cards. Uh, to me, I'm just like, eh. Just gonna... Well, I can't exactly buy AMD, so I guess the answer is, Well, I'm doing it as a hobby, so I don't really care. I'm not, I'm not gonna spend a crazy amount of money. I have other things that I could spend money on as a hobby, so, uh, check it out, it's a river! There's actually, like, some real, like, insane platforming that we'll have to do, but I'm gonna jump in because we're gonna grab all the goodies, uh, <laughs> the people in Nevada have casually dropped here. A lot of fun goodies down here. Or at least that I thought I saw, but it seems to be only just that one. I swear there's more stuff, though. There you go, you got some shotgun shells. You know, as people do, they drop down here. Yeah, even though I had only played this game once, I do very remember this level. It, it seemed like this one really didn't escape my memory very much. Like, I, I, I remember strongly how it all works. So that's all good. That's cool. Uh, getting out of the water here is a bit trickier than it would originally seem, but it's not too bad. You gotta just spot that you climb up here. Also, yeah, I know, I know, the text is a little weird. And then, uh, this is a bit of a weird jump. And I'll, I'll demonstrate why it's a little weird. Um... I'll save the game. So you think, oh, okay, I gotta do a grab. For some odd reason, Lara just misses. She just doesn't grab it. Very strange. You then do a jump, and this time you don't grab, and she lands with her feet. This is one of the very few times I've just noticed the grabbing doesn't work. It throws you off. It's like, oh, okay. There's also gonna be a lot of these weird diagonal jumps all over the place, which is probably a bit more common in, uh, this game than some of the other Tomb Raiders. And I uh, hopefully you can spot that that is a climbable wall. Just have to watch the textures and go, hmm, what mm, sort of looks like a ladder? And the answer is this. This sort of looks like a ladder. And that's good enough. Climb up enough and uh, you'll get here. You'll also see that there was some monkey bars over there. Uh, I'm trying to think where those monkey bars actually put you. 
Does that actually get you all the way over there? Can you even... Can you even monkey bars? Like, can you go from the climb to the monkey bars? Oh my gosh, I should probably get some... Get some width. Um... No, you can't go up into the monkey bars. No. Very odd. Probably there just to easily climb back. Uh, but instead of easily climbing back, we're gonna do the, the gradual climb around the outside of here, which involves a lot of... Mm, tricky jumps. They're trickier than Tomb Raider jumps have been before. And you got the vultures. I will not sell you my Titan V. I wish I had a Titan V. That'd be kind of cool. Um, although we're, we're nearing the end of the year. If I'm going to talk hardware, you know, we're nearing the end of the year. We've got um, the Threadripper 7000 release coming up in the next week. Um, we've already had the announcement, but this is a very like weird ledge here. Because I think there is like a goodie down the bottom, but it's just like, I don't know, it's just shotgun shells. It's nothing too fancy and it's not something I'm going to drop down and climb all the way around again to do. Uh, oh, 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 a uh, slight error I mentioned in the last video. Um, of course, bush must have a snake. Um, I said that you had to get like 59 of the 72 secrets to unlock the the bonus level. Um, I should have properly counted, but uh, I'm now under the impression there are only 59 secrets. So, uh, virtually you have to be getting all of them in order to get that secret level. It's, it's a bit cruel, uh, and by a bit cruel, I mean very cruel, so, more jets, you know, more jets, um, yeah, ah, oh, this is, this is one of the meanest jumps, I, I tell you as well, because it's like, you see what you gotta do, you look down that hole, and you go, hmm, you can slide down, but all that does is it puts you down, uh, I, well, I, I, what I'll do is I'll literally just download the save file at the beginning of the secret level. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna leave it out. I'm not gonna leave it out. I'm gonna properly play it, but, um, it's legit. I, I cannot show all the secrets because I am just not that good at this game. And I think it's a lot easier to just have a, a person who really knows the game more to show off all the secrets, but... Me, me showing off a secret level. Hey, you can just load a save. That's all good. There is a, uh, a switch here. Uh, weirdly, it needs a key. It's got the, the pressy thing, but you need a key in order to prime it or something like that. So, also, <laughs> you can keep putting in the, uh, the, um, oh, here's another, here's another bit of a climb. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Some some are like really hard to do. There's one in um I'm oh, is it the next level or the one after? There's one I remember off the top of my head and it's basically an enemy runs out and will press a button and you need to defeat the enemy before they press the button. And so you've just got to be like coming out in the right angle and chase them in the, in the right way. Um there's a bunch as well. Like, quite there's quite an awkward bunch of, uh, of secrets that involve also backtracking crazy amounts. Um, and, uh, I would love to, to show off those, but it's also like, eh, sometimes I got more time. You know, they, they take quite a bit to, to get to. Um, and then there's just a lot that I just don't know about. But I am trying to do all the ones that I do know about. So there is that. At least the ones I can do off the top of my head without looking at a walkthrough, because... I feel like I, I just lose all the pacing if I look at a walkthrough, you know. I've done it before. I've done I've done looking at walkthroughs on other streams. Um, I think on on Tomb Raider two, I, I looked up a couple of things. Now I'm I'm trying to do the whole just I'll I'll play it a little bit earlier just so I, I'm a bit more aware of what I'm doing. But um, yeah. It's a lot of, like, real, like, tricky kind of bits to get up to the top of this waterfall, but... It's such a satisfying climb. Just that whole canyon bit. You get into this inside, and then the music starts, you're like, ooh, what's going on? We've got this massive water wheel over here, as well as, I believe... It's 
there something over here or it's yeah it totally is totally is oh you bro you didn't even wait the snake is he like right next to me as well Maybe, maybe. Uh, also in, in the realms of... Nice. It, it was a secret. How many secrets are we dealing with on this level? Oh! Two out of three. I actually... Oh, do I know the third one off the top of my head? Mm, I don't know if I know the third one. But you got the Uzis up here. Which I shall proceed to use because... Uh, reason. I've also got... um. Grenade launcher, which maybe seems overkill. Let's let's use the grenade launcher because I know that there's going to be another enemy uh, Rather shortly who is certainly not going to find it very fun There we go the grenade launcher is good fun. Oh Heck yeah. So walk on over to the water wheel. We got that music. You know, that that kind of music. Hello? Anybody home? Oop. Oh, he dodged it. Oh, I think he's going to be a bit too close. We're going to have to oozy him. <laughs> he's uh he's not having a fun time there uh we've got this little little kind of side cavern over here um and it looks a bit fancy but effectively it's a bit kind of weird it's like there's a lift down there like a like a just a lift it's just chilling down there you can climb down and then you'll really know firsthand that yes it is a lift it's just chilling down there there's nothing on it so, don't gain anything by climbing down. Uh, yeah, this week has been pretty, pretty alright. I felt like I've gotten more stuff done. Uh, here's an update on the retro achievement set. It is, uh, uh, I, what I, what I would say is, um, QA ready. Where it's like, I think it's done. But, uh, it's, uh, it's anticipating a, um, just a bit of a QA test, just to spot out that something's actually gone wrong. Someone has QA tested. It actually might be um, all all ready. Like someone will just code review and go, yeah, like you know, the style looks good and um, all that stuff looks good. And it and it'll probably it might go in without me doing anything. So that'll be cool. Uh, and I will officially now say, then yes, I have done a retro treatment set. One out of several thousands on the site, but still a piece of a site. That's good fun. I love this ladder as well, it's just chilling here. I've got some, uh... Some metal paths over here. Um... It's already the approval QA. I thought some friend- Oh, yeah, 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 it's not a, not a friend, like, literally some guy who's just a QA, like, marked guy is like, yeah, I'll play through it. And he said, like, Oh, you- Get out of here! Out of here, bird. Oh, oh, you gotta be careful if you fall down. It's not too bad, but if you if you go a bit too far, the water will suck you down. Um, and if the water sucks you down, you're going all the way to the bottom of the river, all the way, like ten minutes ago, all the way. So that kind of blows my mind. I'm already like twenty minutes into this level, and it's like, yeah, like. <sighs> It's a uh, these three levels are decently long ones. Oh, he's a, he's a drowned bird, um, but yeah, no proper proper QA test. So very very nice. Um, and the guy said, I and I'm very happy. He was like, yeah, I like the set. Uh, everything seems to work as it does. Um, he asked some clarifying questions, and uh, like, because I've got like a set of achievements where um, for each of the worlds. You want to start the world and defeat every enemy without losing a life. What do you mean that's a bush without a snake? Um, 
I love this dam as well. Very nice. Everyone likes a cool dam. Also, I guess the water's cool. Doesn't... I forgot, did the original game have transparent water? It didn't have colored texture on it, so... The graphics get better, I tell ya. Ooh. You gotta do a bit of a bit of a water chase. So we'll, we'll swim up just for a bit more air, because I don't trust myself. Uh, but there's a door you can see in the middle of the two kind of ramps there. We're gonna try our best. There's a bit of swimming in, in the desert level, isn't there? Oh, did you spot that? Did you, did, you, did you just spot that? That's a cheeky lever. And there's two of them, and you gotta make sure you pull both of them, or else you just get caught at the end, and you're like, uh, can't exit. Um, but yeah, you, you said the set was good. There's a, there's, yeah, there's an achievement in each world for killing all the enemies without, um, without dying, uh, which involves some real, like, you know, some real sleuthing for getting the addresses all right. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's the, uh, the quicksand at the beginning of the game was probably, like, in the second level where you just had to like forward throw it and what's actually like the, the worst part and this lever raises that lift there's also a I don't know why there's a door here but like I assume that's just to the exit to, to outside right I got a, a jump here which unfortunately you got to slide down I would love to do a swim dive uh, raising this lift also involved um, draining the water over here. So this whole area is now no water. Which involves revealing a small little thing that we couldn't view before. You can see there's a there's health up there. So we're going to try and jump for that. With a bit of a save. I like, I like how this counts all your... The little number there that's counting your saves is like, no, that's all the times I've ever saved. That's not, that's not just on that file, that's just all of them. Jump back and you'll notice there's a big health there, very nice. And then, I'm gonna drop down here, which it doesn't look like you can drop down, but there is a ledge here. Oh, don't go too far back. And uh, we want to jump into this waterfall. Ooh. It's not a secret. Sup, Lara Croc, Tomb Raider 1996. I swear someone is always playing Tomb Raider 3 when I come on Twitch. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? Hope you're having a good day. We're having a chill day today on this Monday. I am having fun. I enjoy this game a fair bit. I, I, I do like Tomb Raider 2 a fair bit. Uh, this one, I just feel like I struggle with the scale of the levels at times, but it's it's the same good fun. So it's it's pretty good. And hey, the more times I play it, the more times I get better at it. That's always the best part. Ready for Tomb Raider Remastered? Uh, I am ready. I'm this this stream because the best part I did Tomb Raider 2 last year and Tomb Raider 1 the year before. So I'm like, I'm all set. That release is going to come out. I'll be like, yeah, I'm good. I, I know what's going on. That's always the fun part about these remasters, is that, like, someone will come out day one and it's just like, this is, like, where everything is, because I know this game, like, the back of my hand. Like, when Metric Prime Remastered came out, um, you know, that's gonna be... Which, by, by the way, is is any remake ever gonna get, like, mentioned during the, uh, the Game Awards? Probably not. Maybe they'll mention Resident Evil 4, because I guess it's not necessarily a remake. How come that one does? And then Metroid Prime, which currently is the, uh, I know Open Critic is not fact. Ah! Also, yes, did you see? Oh, I, I wanted to show it a bit more. You can kind of see it there. Actually, you can really see it if I go on the inside here. Starting with 2, because that game is the best Tomb Raider game. It is a very good one. Do you like how on this guy's jacket, that is literally the Doom Lost Soul? Like, I don't think there's any ways of going about it. That's the Doom Lost Soul. It's not even like a royalty-free thing. I think they just threw it in there as a fun easter egg. It's like a biker gang, The Lost Souls. It's a, that would be a good one. It's 
missing the eyes. I don't know why it's missing the eyes, but... Uh, so that is, on that on that lift, we have the detonator switch, which allows us to backtrack a bit and put that switch on the detonator. You know, the name implies it, so... Just thought that'd be fun. Ooh. Uh, I was like, I gotta check the ceiling just to make sure. Yeah, it's a fun nod. It's a fun nod, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try and... Mm, I'm gonna do a save. I think I heard it about it because it was a movie. They've done, yeah, they've done two Doom movies. They've done Doom 2005 with The Rock. And, uh, there was a 2018 one? Sort of tying in with the reboot. But, uh, yeah. Now this is probably going to be the gnarliest jump I ever do in this whole game, but trust me. Ugh. <laughs> it's such a... The rock one, yeah. It's such a gnarly jump. I don't know if they intend for that one in particular, or whether you're supposed to do some climbing down there, and... I don't know, but this is... That's how I do it. That's how I roll. And speaking of roll... 3, 2, 1, kaboom. And, uh, casually... Casually a boulder, you know. I really like a good old boulder. I don't think there's anything chilling in the boulder hole. If you can even see what's going on in here. Oh. Oh, I cannot see anything now. What am, what am I... Oh, I... Camera suck. Lara's just, like, turning around and being like, oh, what's going on here? So we've blown up the hole. This is not my first playthrough, no. It is my... I would say... I'd be fair, I'd say third. I've played the game before, once. Like, probably, like, two or three. Three years ago, I'd probably say. Um, and then, to remind myself, I played it, like, literally, like, two days ago. So. So, the levels are fresh in my mind. But the, uh... Like, all the secrets and really the, long, the longevity, not as much in my mind. So I'm trying to remember as much as I can to, to make it a, a smooth video, a smooth stream. Also with how good you're doing, I was like, yeah, this is a great... Oh, I, <laughs> I mean, I've played the other games as well, so that always helps. Uh, the only one I have never played, I've not played Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I have not played... Um, Temple of Osiris? It's not... I, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, for, for reference, uh, for reference, yeah, the, um, when I played Tomb Raider 2, uh, last year, I, Temple of Osiris, my baby. I did enjoy the other one, though, I did enjoy, um, the, uh, what was the other one, the Guardian of Light? So I really should, like, go and give that one a, a go. It's like, there's a certain, like, degree of, like, you know, when, you know, you're making, like, a spin-off. And it's not a mobile title, but it feels a little, like, Xbox Live Arcade. But this, like, some, re it's a really good quality title. Oh, hi there, Snake. How are you doing? Oh, you like the, oh, I didn't, okay, I got him. Guardian Light was good. God. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting that. This is a very large sloped surface that totally won't come into play later and uh, sending more jets over. Now you might think, ah yes, all I have to do is jump towards this barbed wire fence. And then Lara decides to just, well, pfft. she gets in me. To be honest, if you get electrocuted like that, you will not land like that. You will, you will certainly rigor mortis immediately. Not, it's not rigor mortis. What's the term? Shadow of the Tomb Raider is also a very pretty game. I would like to play it. I held off when I first got it because uh, I was like, oh, I don't have an RTX card. I got a 1080 Ti very late, and I was like, I'm riding that out for the longest time without an RTX card. And then I got a a 4070 Ti earlier this year, so I guess perfect opportunity to play it at some point. Oh, I got this is another one where it's like you can't grab it, but you can jump it. Have you played all the main TR games then? Yes, yes, I have. Even Tomb Raider 6. The best one. 
I love just being able to jump further arbitrarily when the game says I can. <laughs> Uh, also, this includes, this does include the, uh, the expansion, so I have actually played, um, like, the Golden Mask, uh, for Tomb Raider 3, and, was it, was that the Tomb Raider 3 one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some fun ones. Dude, this, this, like, upward part always threw me off as well, because AOD was, uh, I thought was cool. I couldn't finish it because my laptop isn't powerful enough. One day, one day. It's it's also it is a weirdly demanding game, um, and it's on the same engine as a uh, Thief Deadly Shadows, isn't it? And it's like that game is also fairly demanding. That's another one. I actually I've got I never I didn't play it with audio, but like back when I was just like sharing games with my friends and I would stream it to the Switch channel, and I've actually got like some. Uh, the actual recordings of me playing um, Thief for the very, very first time. The thing with Thief, though, is that it's a very slow game. So, it's weird because Anniversary runs fine and that came out years later. Anniversary is a, an amazingly optimized title. It, all, all three of the Crystal Dynamics ones are pretty well optimized. But particularly Anniversary. I don't know how. Also, I say all three of the Crystal Dynamics ones as if they didn't make the uh, other Crystal Dynamics ones. Yeah, the, uh, the reboot trilogy, as it were. And it is curious how, like, I guess Embracer Group owns Iados. Or Crystal Dynamics. Oh. I can't even get you with the last few shots. What was that? Reload. Well, on PC, they're really good, but the PS3 remasters are terrible. Ooh, No one likes a bad PS3 remaster. Ooh, that's never fun. Climb the water tower. And what is inside? Embracer Group bought Tomb Raider, and immediately they started the remasters. I mean, it makes money, but it is also, like... Actually, oh, you know what that, that, that lever did? It opened that door. That door is normally closed. There's two levers, one open the door, which I'll go to eventually, and the other one open the door there, but there's no water, so we can't do anything just yet here. Yeah. Weren't they, like, wasn't there, like, some bad news about, um, how Embracer Group was handling the, it was either Tomb Raider or Deus Ex, I forgot which. Um, and alas, Deus Ex is just permanently in limbo. Permanently. It's not permanent, but you know what I mean. Dude, my homeboys are sharing around a clip of uh, JC Denton at the end of the game saying, like, you know, humans may be imperfect, but a, a, a computer program built around language synthesis isn't going to be the solution to their problems. I'm like, how come Deus Ex continually has relevant quotes for today's society? Crystal didn't want to do it. But I call them Daddy Embracer. Embracer was like, give the fans what they want. Tomb Raider Embracer is being extremely smart. It, yeah, like, I mean, Tomb Raider sells. And as much as, I don't know, like, I, I feel like I've, I've got, like, some, like, principles of, like, eh, hey, it'd be cool to, like, have new content and new kinds of, like, things and ideas. But honestly, it's like, eh, hey, you know, people would actually pay for Tomb Raider level packs. Do what, um, do what they do for, like, uh, the Quake remasters, which is you just get a new studio and just make some new levels on the engine. They funded remasters since the reboots were making a profit. They had Amazon fund the new Tomb Raider game. Ooh. Dude, I, I would, I would be very happy if, uh, Tomb Raider could have the night, the, um, yeah, the night dive treatment, the Samuel Villarreal treatment. Also another electrified fence. And I love how, like, you gotta go through this tunnel, hit a switch, go back through the tunnel, hit a switch, and now go through the tunnel again. Because you've now finished the sequence of hitting the switches. I'm just hearing a guy climbing over in the, in the distance. Such a slog to get through this bit, though, I tell you. At the very least, it is a clear, like, halfway point in the level to get that detonator switch. So, that's simple enough. And these levels aren't actually... Mmm. Mmm. Maybe. Maybe they do. Embracer, I have a feeling, is testing Crystal dynamic Dynamics. 
I wouldn't be shocked if they take Tomb Raider away and give it to another company if the new game doesn't meet the expectations. It'd be a little sad, but... How much of Crystal Dynamics is the same team? Like... How much of them are the same guys who made Gex? Do they even have Gex? Oh wait, aren't they doing a re- they're already doing a remaster of Gex, aren't they? Oh, okay. Remasters will, because those don't cost like anything- or cost like anything to make, and are an easy cash grab. Uh, but the new game, they're gonna make sure Lara gets back to her old self. You could definitely- I think Tomb Raider is flexible enough that you could probably do whatever. Um... Ugh. Ugh. I was expecting a ramp, I don't know why. It is a bit of a weird jump here, because you just jump down and you take like a little bit, but... Let's uh, let's bring out the shoddy... Not the death. <laughs> Hi there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That would... It's not a pretty sight to <laughs> shotgun that close to someone. Ooh. He's not having a fun day. I always feel bad about using these weapons, but then it's like... Ooh. Hi there. Was lovely. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm so excited for them to do four, five, six remasters. It'd be cool. It'd be cool. I'm like looking around. I'm going, where is he? And I know he's locked up in his little tiny room. He knows. He knows. He knows what's up for him. Imagine, like, just being a part of a military base, and, uh, oh look, what the Um, and you know that feeling, I think mean, someone miss a game in a niche coming out, you really enjoy, uh, and then you get to it and love it. So, <laughs> whoop, come at me, bro. Look at that, I shot him so hard he climbed the, the box again. <laughs> um, I know that feeling a lot, I experienced that, um, or maybe not in a niche coming out. But I experienced that kind of recently with the two, uh, the Tony Hawk games, and I never played them as a kid, and then I just like played them again, and I was like, dude, this is like, eternally good. Like, I get it. I didn't actually get the first game very well, um, so maybe, maybe shun me on that one, but the second game I'm like, this is genius, this game is so smart. And all the other ones after. Uh, the niche is an old niche, a new game coming out for it. Maybe if there was a new, like, Skate 4, maybe if that's the example. I don't which game in particular are you talking about? Or if it's not a game, it might be music related. Casually, this quad bike is very good and you can drive up ramps and then you gotta make sure you don't fly off it. <laughs> like the top down spaceship games, just explorations in combat but not level based or anything. Starcom Nexus, ooh, I've not heard of that one, but uh, my brain's thinking like, I don't know too many space games. Uh, I know of Elite. And, uh, I want to say it's bound to be some competitors that I know of in the 90s, and I just can't, like, cite my name on it, or put a name to the, the thing in my head. Uh, how Resident Evil have remastered the PS1 trilogy is, uh, shocking, because there are just two separate timelines. Yeah, they, they just effectively reinvent those games, and I think that's fine to do- Oh, whoops. Did I say before or after I go on the club bike? I just went straight for that lever and I forgot. Oh yes. Guess what the key cut deactivates. And now much stronger in the end game. That's the best part about those space games, is that they are super good at giving that feeling of just strength and utter dominance. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of platforming deaths. The ships, which just a single one, was a heavy fight, and now I fight them. Oh exactly. Generator access. Oh, so much plasma. It's the best feeling. Come at me. That poor guy. That poor guy. Well, he did come at me, though. None of these people have guns, by the way. You, you outpower them the whole time. Oh, so much plasma. They get pushed away. Who's that cute little guy at the bottom left of the screen? That is my little Munchlax avatar that I... Definitely stole from a Cerebi.net page like 20 years ago, and it's from a um, it's from a uh, a Koro Koro magazine, which is you know releases a lot. Actually, I think they do leaks as well, but uh, usually a lot of Pokemon information comes for us from them. 
I'm still a Pokemon fan. I don't play like every single like newest thing, but it's just like, hey, you know, it's a munchlax. So now with the quad bike out, uh, we can now hop down here and I'm gonna try my best to not skip this cutscene. Where Lara just breaks her back. Oh my gosh, Lara, jeez. <laughs> Crazy geek freak. What kind of stunt is that to pull? Let's take her in. <laughs> she don't look much like one of them. Maybe she's an eco-terrorist or something. And they wear hot pants, huh? <laughs> so they carry her out. Now when I was testing this, I had some very strange issues with uh, this cutscene in particular. Maybe it was because, maybe it was because I goofed it. Okay. Because uh, what I was doing was, uh, when I triggered that cutscene, I held, um, like, a button, and it basically, like, skipped the cutscene and immediately went to the, um, to the next level. And then I just had, like, a bit where it would just fail to load textures. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be the case, uh, so that's good. Yeah, she broke her all back. Uh, Starcom is a bit like Space Pirates and Zombies. Oh, yeah, 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 I've heard of Spaz, yes. But yeah, I love space games exactly because of that power meter. Oh, so good. I need to get into more space games. So uh, with with that, by the way, we lose our entire inventory. Uh, and it's a bit mean in this game because if you don't choose the Nevada level first, well, then you don't get to keep any of the things you'll get in any of the other levels. So it's best to do this level first just so you can you know, start off. We're going to be going pretty weapons free for this whole level. Apparently, if you stand in the window... Uh, this guy is like, I'm gonna come out and slap you silly. Uh, okay. Well, I guess you're not gonna let me press that button, but I'm gonna press this one instead. Come on, come on, let me press it. If you can press the button... Uh, you'll be letting out the prisoners, and hopefully they don't just circle around them, and they actually decide to knock their face over. So very nice. Imagine how many new players I'm not going to do. Well, it's not the first one that's selected. I think South Pacific is selected first. So, we're in the beginning, one ah. Chirk Scout was a danger to my ship with one or two can uh, plasma cannons firing every second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of those games have that kind of, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> like you're really helpless at the beginning of those games. Because it's not even just like a numbers game as well. It's literally like a... I have no strategy against these kinds of things, and you just build it up over time. It's great. Not even bigger ships get brushed aside by my 17 plasma cannons, hurling out a total of almost 60 shots per second. Uh, I think there's not really anything in these cells other than having a lot of dudes. Uh, in fact, the bottom floor is also sort of moot because, uh, well, there's not really anything lying around. And there's a gate, you can see. That's how they do prisons, you double lock. You got a, you got a big lock, and then your individual locks. But if you walk into this cell, uh, casually his sink has a hole. He's been digging a hole. And we're gonna push our way out. Uh, but yeah, the, um, the Nevada levels stop being, um, tombs and natural landmarks from this point on, so. Games like Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider is not a power level kind of thing. It's like, it's a exploration and figure out what kind of place you're diving yourself into so it's a different kind of game yeah i actually i played um i have nearly finished i've got like a little little teeny tiny thing left um oh actually i think there's a secret if you push this out you're, what you're supposed to do is uh you can see that you can climb up here and uh, get your way out here, but I'm pretty sure if we push this enough times, we'll be able to find a secret around here. It's a real crafty secret, so let's pull this box back. Um, you have gl slight glimpses of it during final boss fights, which is why I brought Tomb Raider up for this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's some good boss fights and stuff, and boss fights are always, uh, uh, you know, it's that feeling of having like a, a super challenge, that super power before or during the pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always that good to have that kind of feeling. Um, 
So yeah, with that box kind of pulled out a little more, we've now got the ability to pull this. And it's now kind of fully boxed me in, but I can just climb back through here for the third time. And would you look at that? They put health right there. Or like Metroid or the second phase of Mother Brain. Exactly, exactly. Speaking of Mother Brain, I, I uh, recently, yeah, so I recently got most of the way through and I've just got to clean up a few loose ends of Chrono Trigger on the SNES. Space games give you that power level constantly and make you feel like it was a special thing. Well, have I got a game for you if you... I can't even see anything here, I tell you that. And you got no flares for a bit of the game, it's just like, ugh. Um, I think it is in part because you literally can grow bigger. S sometimes, yeah, so sometimes the physical aspect is uh, definitely a part... Am I going to slide here? I think you do slide here, so I'm going to have to do a run. Some part is like the physical getting bigger. Um, because I was going to say like a game like Katamari is a great example where like you physically get bigger and even though really not much changes other than you're bigger, it's like, well, you know, your scale and your scope feels very different. Um, and that one doesn't even, you know, apart from, I guess, you are a certain size and you can consume things when you're above a certain size. It's not really much of a numbers game. It's more of a visual game. You're not comparing numbers. You're just you're just gauging how big things are. Uh, that opens up these things behind you, and conveniently, there's a ladder right here. Where we, sh we shall descend into the literal unknown, and all I can say is there is barbed wire at the bottom. Katamari is a very unique game that everyone should play at some point. Uh, we got a very dark hole. Oh. Let's <laughs> the door in the way. Uh, this is directly on the other side of our, uh, our, our, uh, our prison gate. I'm just going to casually sneak around. There is a bit of stealth in this level. If you can get around to places without a guy seeing you, you can effectively trigger switches without them you know, being quite alerted to you, which saves your hide a little bit more often than not. So with that, that opens up the gate, allowing for my uh, compatriots to uh, beat them up. Get him! Oh, dang! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Yeah! He also drops uh, shotgun ammo because he was totally shooting a shotgun. Not the gun itself, by the way, just the shotgun. Uh, and he also drops a, a keycard type A. We'll be using that keycard type A on this door? I think it was further down then. Thank you, compatriots. Oh, I don't see it as much over here. It doesn't look like there's anything quite over there. Um, yeah, that, I that idea of leveling up, like, it's very, you know, a lot of RPGs have things... What the... Look out, JC, it's a bomb! Can I, can I jump up? Oh. Can I jump up there or is it, is it a bit too far? It really does look like she'd be able to like grab the ledge. But then she's... How strange. That beeping is the radar by the way. It's not like a... There's no bombs. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh... Yeah, I, I, uh, I, oh my gosh, I'm blind. There's a little, there's a little keycard panel right there. I just walk right past it because it's very dark and you don't have flares and I know I could just turn the gamma up, but it's fun having the, you know, the original brightness kicking in. Let's, uh, let's do a save here because that's a good point to just make sure I'm not losing too much progress. We are in Bay D. We're going to walk through like five different bays and you just got to pay attention to the names because that's, that's how you know where you are. Uh, this level is... Very labyrinthian. It is very hard to keep track of. And, uh, well, maybe it's not very, very hard. It's just try to remember what you've seen and what you haven't seen. That seems to be the way that you can accomplish most, like, kind of old game level design. But this one in particular, it's like try and latch onto landmarks. So it's like, oh, we got this cafeteria and we're in Bay D. 
You know, like that's that's your sign. Um, there's buttons and switches all over the place as well, so there's going to be things that you open up that aren't necessarily with keys. Um, we've got uh, toilets. They all have. I hate this. They all have the toilet paper ripped not along the the square. Uh, what a that is probably the most criminal thing I have ever seen. Every single one of them. All uniform. The only Tomb Raider game I barely remember is Tomb Raider 3 because of the funky levels like this. Oh, exactly. That, and they don't let up. Every level is significantly, like, you know, maze-like. It, it seems to be that there's, um, there's just so much to try and understand and pack into these levels. Like, uh, I saw, um... This one video, it's not, he doesn't have too many subs, this one guy, but um, I saw this one video of this guy uh, taking like an isometric map of every single level and drawing like the lines and describing like what you do at each point in, in the levels. And it's just like, he'd take like three minutes, which doesn't sound too long to explain a level, but then it's just like every single like pathway that you take and, and just things like, sometimes it's like backtrack this whole corridor and, it, and that's like a couple of minutes and just so then a few seconds. Um, all of these levels when I played them uh, a couple of days ago, yeah, I took like 50 minutes. This is this is a real serious thing. So the you could spot this uh, hole in the ceiling, and even though there's this box to your right, only this one that I've been pushing is the one you can push. So you gotta understand that there's a box puzzle. Three minutes is lots. Three minutes is still a fair bit of time just to explain where you go in a single static level. Uh, is, uh, I know I did a Tomb Raider 2 video, and it's a lot simpler. It's a lot easier to explain Tomb Raider 2 levels. Even some of the more complex ones. I think we lost something in modern days. I do think that there's a degree of 1998 sort of, you know, is the, uh, well, maybe not 1998, but around, uh, more the chicken. I think I've heard the name, to be honest. I've heard the name. And of course the Spyro games. We lost backtracking. I do miss backtracking. There, there's, there is a degree of smart backtracking where having the player very well signaled where they need to go back to and making it interesting each time. The game world could be abstract. Um, so there's going to be points in like this level, for example, where this one's a decent example of like, you're going to backtrack, but it's like, you're not going to go for too many things. Uh, we have flooded the entire place, including the bathroom and the toilet paper is still intact. Amazing. Incredible. There's nothing in the ceiling. There's nothing here. Yeah. Uh, and the game premise is complete nonsense. It's still possible, to, not to the degree. I'm trying to think, though. There are, and I, I know it's a bit more indie, um, and I keep mentioning this game, um, but I played uh, ages ago. Oh my gosh, I can't see anything. Do I have flares? Nope. Um, there's a game called uh, Toki Tori 2, which I think is a great example of modern day backtracking. Oh, oh I'm in the fire. Get out of the fire. I can't handle the heat. I gotta stay out of the kitchen. Uh, more the chicken, and I only know people like the speedrun, and it was shown during some event. Uh, it is a chicken protecting other chickens from the invasion of the cubes. The invasion of the cubes. Um, but yeah, if you ever played Toki Tori 2, that's a cool game because the whole game is one large open world, but the idea is that you don't know how any of the mechanics work. Hey. Oh. Hi there. Hi, 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 hi. Oh, I want to press the button. Okay, I guess I'm not pressing the button. Uh, oh. Ah, ah. They only hurt when they swing, so as long as you don't... Ugh. Oh, no, I want to press the button. I want to press the button. Okay, thanks. Next one, boy. See ya. Beep. I think if I open this up, I'm now back to... Yeah, I'm back to here. And hopefully, my pals know that this is accessible. I still haven't finished Outer Wilds, that is a great game. <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, which one was Outer Wilds? Which one was Outer Worlds? Outer Wilds is the, um, the... the It's a 12 minute game, isn't it? Was it 12 minute? 22 minute? The one where you're on a constant loop. I don't know too much about it. 15? Okay. I'm on the right lines. Yeah, beat him up. These guys can die, by the way. It's just that they've got a pretty decent amount of health. Uh, and you progress, your progress is purely from your knowledge of the game world. That is the exact same as Toki Tori 2, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, you learn abilities, but it's like, yeah, if you know the the way to trigger the abilities, then you can just do them. 
You know, you don't you don't need the game to unlock it for you. You just do it. But you don't know. And then you backtrack through levels and you find alternate paths and you find all the keys and all this wonderful stuff. Um, and uh, it's very, very fun. Very organic. Um, and it's weird because Toki Tori is a very old game. It's a Game Boy Color game. And uh, this is just a natural evolution of it. Uh, okay, so we've done... We've opened the the, the kitchen gates and that there's a massive tray of... Of food. Uh, you could say I'm not a fan of this. Dun 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 dun. dun. I'm gonna grab my The Sims, and uh, we're now gonna do a fun slide and grab. Whoa. This is a bit of a weird one as well because it's very not obvious from this angle. This that is a slope. This is not a slope, and there is also a, a pit here, and you can climb through that. So. We continue to delve even deeper into this place. It keeps go it keeps it keeps getting more insane this 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 world, I tell ya. I love hearing the fan noises though, it's great. Um oh, what are you doing, Lara? What are you doing? What are you doing? You gotta you gotta put your footing on that. Or else you never get over there. Um, yeah, no, I play... I, <laughs> I play Chrono Trigger. Oh, hi. Um, but I never played the, uh... The... The kind of extra content before. And now I have, and it's like... It's good. If a little bit, it's easier than the proper finish of the game. So you might as well do the side content as you've gone throughout the game. Or rather, you know, at the end of the game there. Thank you, my man. Thank you for, for releasing me. You're a bit stuck over here because you can't jump. But, you know, I hope things work out for you. Bay. Oh, what a what a wonderful ladder. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend Chrono Trigger. I think, you know, it, it does its story so well. And it's just, it's so... Uh, I guess what I would say is, um, fresh. It feels fresh, no matter how old the game actually is. It's got that wonderful SNES visuals, the the presentation, the kind of speed and the brevity of everything. There was a guy over there. Hi, ah, okay, see ya. Uh, the Great Outdoors. Tokitori looks like a cutesy game. It is It is a fun little cutesy game, but it is serious. You don't want to go through those green lasers. Green lasers activate turrets. Oh, I thought I was going to get away from that guy, but no, he's just going to f chase me down here. Or maybe he's going to spend his time going down the stairs. It gives me enough time to... Release the... Well, it's not a kraken. You are a yellow bird. You are, it, is, it is cutesy in the sense that you are a yellow bird, yes. Get him! Get him! Get him! Yeah! He has a key, because of course he does! There's another door over there, but we won't be able to access that door just yet. I like this whole run over here just to be able to take out a guy kind of level design as well. Because, uh, and, and I guess this is like, you know, there's a bunch of Tomb Raider levels all involving your weapons being gone and you've got to figure out how to get through the level, you know, without being able to, to shoot people. Uh, so you don't get new abilities, just as an example, from Castlevania. Yeah, yeah. So all the abilities are hinged around the songs that you do. Some things, you know, you, there are things that you... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll, you'll, you'll learn from, uh, from birds or other kinds of just things. Um, is a fatality... <laughs> like a fatality in Mortal Kombat. Um, or there's things like, uh, you can, um... Yeah, it's mostly like triggering things or like getting an enemy to like you know, behave in a certain way. Um, it's been a while, so I'm trying to remember what the actual abilities are. I'll probably, I'll say I won't spoil it, but, um, but yeah, uh, I don't think you could directly take out the enemies as well, so it's all about the, the puzzle solving aspect of, you know, how do you get around things or how do you drop stuff on them, because that's usually the, the, the puzzle solving way. I'm a pacifist, but I do drop rocks on my enemies. But yeah, it's a nice little cutesy game. It goes on insane sales. So, uh, if it seems like it's a bit of a price, it goes very, very cheap. 
and it's definitely worth the it's worth a good play so drop down here oh, I'm gonna break my legs whoops <laughs> we got a turret over there guy patrolling the grounds over there so maybe let's just duck down here go through this little tunnel again we are still in Bay E as well your honor it was not my fault he walked <laughs> You're on a permission to call the jury chat. Uh, that is exactly right where we were. There were two guys in the cell. Hmm. But unleashing these guys should make quick work of the guys standing up there. It's weird, they've got all these... I think they already took them down. Um, they've got all these turrets around, but as long as no one walks into the, uh, the turret line of sights, no one takes it. So, uh, we've finally got at least a flare. Eight flares, even better. Uh, here we go. Oh. And anyway, we got a yellow security pass. I'm pretty sure that guy dropped the pass, and if not, it would have been some other guy. Let's have a good save, because it's been a bit since I've saved. Um... So, uh, ooh, there's, a, there's a jet plane. I love any time, like, because the game's got a lot of this, like, kind of grid-based, you know, kind of map design. And the moment you see, like, just objects, it's like, ooh, very nice. Very, very cool, very nice. We started again to the, some kind of, like, fun little design set pieces here, so... If we go down here, there's a guy chilling there, so it's like, hmm. Better not go down there, I'm gonna sneak around. I don't know what's going on with the ceiling. That's a fun texture, I guess. Continue to sneak around. You'll now be over here, in this kind of behind area. Drop down, and... Oh, oh my gosh, bro, bro, bro. Quick, pull the... Ah, 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 pull the lever, pull the lever. And it looks really weird, uh, but you can faintly see there's a red laser just being emitted. And the red laser, uh, kills things. Including you, so you probably want to jump over it. Your Honor, he just walked into the death laser. <laughs> um, have I acknowledged, by the way, that Lara is, uh, effectively sicking, um, inmates on federal employees? I just want to note that. Like, I, I'm like, yeah, in previous, a lot of other... Laser's also an indicator of how good the emulation is. Um, I think they render alright, but I think they are based on the screen size. So if you're playing in 4K, it becomes even harder to see. There really should be a thickness on them, but, you know, the way they, they drew it. Uh, so we got a wonderful, massive satellite dish. What a very fun landmark right here. Um, too bad it's not like you can tell where this was compared to the rest of the map. I would love, like, you know, larger landmark things, but, eh. I think the goal is we want to end up in that hole. So, let's give it a save. I mean, the rendered in a fixed pixel width unrelated to the screen size. Oh, like the UI? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the best part, actually, you know what as well, I can, because I can change the screen resolution. Next time we see a laser, I'm going to test that. Because I can turn up the, the resolution and hopefully it doesn't balk the, uh, <laughs> the OBS capture. It shouldn't. It should be fine. Ooh. Uh, so the topic I wanted to mildly talk about today is, uh, um, uh, there's a, a, mm, if I say controversy, it's like, I don't know, I'm not even part of, like, this click. Uh, I've never played a Yakuza or a Like a Dragon game, as the franchise is now wanting to be called. Um, Yakuza or Like a Dragon Gaiden. There's a there's a subtitle to it. Oof, camera. Uh, there's a subtitle to it, but it's a it's an RPG franchise now. I didn't even realize that they were going for that. Um, just came out in English speaking countries. Uh, they have decided to make a dub for this one. They've done a dub in some other of the games, uh, but uh, in this one, uh, notably, people 
on my timeline in particular, so whether it relates to uh, the community as a whole, I don't know. Um, don't like the guy who voices Kiryu. They may not like his personality or the things that he says afterwards, such as the fact he earned Kiryu, in implying that I personally didn't. I'm really upset about that one. I'm personally offended. Uh, we fall down this massive bit here, by the way, and we end up into this central room that tries to suck us towards these fans, which is not too bad because they're just walls. But you gotta watch out for that central bit there. This is this is a bit of a yeah. The level design doesn't really tell you where you're meant to go, because um, you got to hold here. I'm gonna oh, I tabbed out. I hate this. I hate. Ugh. For reference, um, what's the? I'm pretty sure the options menu is, uh, sorry, sorry, the pause menu is by hitting escape, and the jump button is alt. So, when on my controller I hit, I'm holding down the jump button and moving forward. It just it just does that, sorry. If you go down here, um, yeah, we got a death fan. You just gotta learn the hard way, because it's not like you can see that. Uh, you've got that over there, which is not where you're meant to go. If you go up there, you will find you do not have the thing you need. So you need to go up here, you need to somehow, I'm gonna hold a flare just so you can see a bit easier. Um, there's a, there's a slope here that you can stand on, and then, uh... I guess we'll, we'll jump to the diagonal. There we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I will preface this by a bunch of things. One, I've never played a Yakuza or a Like a Dragon game. I own a bunch, and I probably should play them, but I haven't, so. Uh, um, I'm also not a professional voice actor, and I'm also not a professional singer. So I will purely judge based on a singing scene and uh, not extrapolate over the rest of the dub, because a lot of people are pulling every single thing about it, saying it's one of the worst dubs they've ever heard, oh my gosh. And then they double down by saying they hate the voice actor uh, personally on Twitter and things that he said, and it's like, you know, things that they, they don't like. Um, Twitter's usually the place where you find things that people don't like. But in particular, there is a song called Justice. I know that the Yakuza games uh, famously have karaoke uh, minigames in them um, and uh, even if you don't know a Yakuza game uh, you know if you if you recall a couple of years ago that dame dame that song was like you know memeing all around it was like the I don't, I don't know exactly what was the context for, for people posting that I saw a lot of people posting it with like the face app thing it would just be like Someone's like in trouble and just before it like moments of disaster we cut to the face app of just you know stretching their face around singing down there down there. Um I thought it was funny. Uh but uh there's a song called Justice that exists in multiple Yakuza games. Um I'm informed that it is in the first one, but I definitely saw it was in the last uh Like a Dragon RPG, uh from only a couple of years ago, as well as Yakuza 0, which I think is a game that probably a lot of people know, um, just because it's always been rather cheap and easy to get. This is a very dimly lit corridor, just to find out that you got to crawl. Oh, that's fun. That's a fun indicator to tell you to not follow him as well, to have a guard go the other way. We are still in Bay D, by the way. Um, I'm pretty sure if I press this, this closes the hallway. Yeah. There's actually nothing in that guy's direction. It's just, there is an enemy there. Um, okay. We're, we're now presented with a crossroads of places to visit. So I'm going to climb up here. We're going to see. Um, so there's a song called Justice. Uh, as someone who hasn't played the Yakuza games, I can only recall the chorus because that's the bit that really latched out to me as, Ooh, the singing isn't great. The singing's not great. And... I think there were three things that got to me in the singing. First of all, there's insane auto-tune, and I know auto-tune is very easy to make fun of, uh, but also, yeah, like, there's auto-tune, and uh, the, the more original, or rather the, the Japanese versions are not, well, they're not really, there's a little bit of auto-tune, but it's, it's pretty mild, it's pretty, like, 
you'd only know if you're really listening out for it. Someone is then going to say like, oh, yeah, what do you mean? There's no water tune. Trust me, there's always going to be little tiny amounts of water tune. It's fine. It's, it's, it's fine. I'm not criticizing his overall singing performance. Oh. I'm going to go this way then. I love these like circuit board little hallways, by the way. Like I'm climbing in a whole computer. Just to get a key, by the way. This is one of the keys. Um, so, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, the, the Japanese does not have the auto-tune. And the auto-tune is rather horrendous in the sense that it, one, it doesn't hide a lot of the imperfections. And also, there's, there's one note, uh, that's, like, very wrong, I heard, where it's like, uh... You know, we're breaking the world, breaking the rules together. Like there's that, and then there's I, what's the lyrics? I forgot. It's like dun 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 dun. Oh my gosh, that was a very off pitch. I can't sing. I just just something like that. It's like it's like that fourth kind of phrase. Um, compare the Japanese and the English. Uh, there's like one word that's actually off tone it's like if i if i what's the uh, what's what's the what's the key it's in breaking do, 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 do. it's an e minor i think something like that um and then uh like the the note that he wants to hit is probably an a but for some reason it's like an a flat and it's like an a flat is not in the the tonal space there so it's like you can hear the auto tune corrects it to that note and that's not what it should be um and it's not there in the japanese so uh i think i could open this back up and go out actually no i don't have to open this up and go but how where am i where am i going there's a ladder here and you can climb up this ladder and you can actually like get out like that so and yeah, yeah, we spent all that time just to open up a key to do that, so... To close that gate. Uh, number two, uh, I am not a vocal coach or anything, but I'm fairly certain when you're singing, you try to reduce the amount of leading consonants when you're saying words. Um, so there's a line in, in the Japanese where they say the English word tenderness at the end of a lyric, uh, at the end of a line. And tenderness is a tricky word to fall into this problem with because when you say tenderness, the N in tender, you usually hold out for a bit. You'll like spot yourself doing it. If you say the word tenderness, you'll hear that N is there. When you're singing, you probably want to reduce that. You want to keep the vowel uh, present as long as possible. So uh, I forgot the, the, the rest of the words leading up to it. It's like... Uh, breaking the world, breaking the rules together. No time for tenderness, and it's like you try to you try to keep the the n very removed. Listen to the guys to the dubs singing voice. Uh, oh, there's a laser in this room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Also, I'm drowning. <laughs> um, uh, so that laser, I'm very certain, is one pixel on screen, and you can see it. It looks a little weird when um when uh you pause because this pause has a certain resolution so i'm going to change the game resolution <laughs> we're going to see does that this is going to look really weird but uh trust me like you can make the resolution go all the way up can you see that line i'm very certain that is one one pixel on screen it's it's visible it's visible there it's very hard to see there Mm, might not, it might be too light, two pixels. It might be two pixels. Because I'm thinking, this is 4K. This starts getting very hard if you're trying to pick the resolution. Uh, oh, I just want to test that out. And just for reference, if I change the resolution enough, down to everyone's favorite. Heck yeah. Yes, you can, you can very easily see the line. <laughs> so, I was not playing at this resolution. If you're playing at 320 by 200, congrats, man. Congrats. That is some perseverance right there. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, number three on the, the uh, I guess, the, the faults of the, the dub singing um, is uh, just the timing of the, the notes as well. There's a couple where it's like you can kind of hear it. And I, I feel like the problem is that, you know, I, I don't want to blame the voice actor for everything uh, because 
when it's a final product like this, it's a combination of everything. And I think it's fair to just provide equal blame. How about if there's a very bad performance, I would say there's a bit of blame on the voice director for not giving him, you know, the right information. There's a bit on the voice caster, which is usually separate um, for picking the person. And a, uh, I guess a thing on the voice actor for not doing as good a job as desirable would be putting it lightly but uh, yeah like I, I i'm not saying i'd be a better kiryu voicer but there's like there's things where it's like i don't know man i could probably sing better than this guy just normally it, it just feels like that maybe maybe he's got some good singing repertoire i don't know but if i'm comparing that performance to me i don't know man me as my uh, oh wait before i go up here as well oh, oh. I shouldn't have gone up there right away. Because this guy, this guy is showing you the goods. He's showing you the goods. I am being chased by that one guy. Hopefully they don't chase me through here. They are. Oh, he's going to beat up that one guy for me. Thank you. Okay. Press the button. And the door opens. And finally, after how long in this level? We get the guns. You don't get all your stuff though, so <laughs> there was a reason why I was really going ham on the Uzis in the last level, because uh, this is not all your stuff. Is that guy really, really getting shot? I think he died. I think he actually died. You know what this means? We must avenge him with the Desert Eagle, which will help carry you through the rest of this level. You also got their pistols if, if you want to fall back, but that's very cruel. The 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 bit there and uh also lara will try to aim towards turrets a lot which is not as desirable i mm, can you jump over this you might be able to jump over this um so yeah but yeah i feel like a lot of people are get oh, oh, oh. at least you can stand under the turret and it can't get you actually it's it's pretty nearsighted as well like it once it really loses you it's like you kind of have to stand in the turret again to so most dudes will take two deagle shots to the face, uh, which is very good fun. Poor guy. Poor guy. He was just doing his best. I probably shouldn't have baited this guy right from the beginning, though. Um, oh, it's such a good feeling, though. Look at this guy. Look at him. He's calling for backup. He's calling for backup. He's calling for backup. Oh, he did actually call for backup. Not doing they're not sending their best though. At least I got a nice large Oh <laughs> Maybe they are sending their best. This poor guy. This poor guy. It's poor Like it I actually feel bad. I feel a little bad. Because like these people are just doing their job. They're not like they're not hired grunts trying to steal ancient artifacts. These are just feds. In the federal building! They're not even doing any mayhem. They're just... They're just doing what... Lara! You, you, come on! What is she doing? The moral implications of Tomb Raider 3 was Lara in the wrong the whole time. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't want to be too harsh on the... on Who's the guy? Yongye? I don't know. Is, it, is that how you say it? I don't want to be too harsh on him. Um, I see some people uh, say cynical takes, which may or may not be real, of uh, someone dropped no. the key. Someone over there dropped that key. The question is who? Um, some cynical w people would say um, Yongye is not a union member. Uh, and I always love how like unions are like insanely divisive yeah this guy was totally holding on to that key i don't really like i don't know much about like the nuances of unions um because it's like on the one hand it's like yeah worker rights and then on the other hand it's like yeah like companies really can't hold every single person to the ultra idealistic standards there's a sweet spot somewhere in between um, 
and uh, yeah, I I guess it, it really depends on scenario and person. Uh, okay, Lara, you just walked into a room and just killed a guard with a deagle. You could have gone for headshots as well. Just saying, it would it would have taken one bullet, but no. Press that. Oh, that's not the right button. You little, little doggy, little doggy. Very cool. Those boxes are the key to getting out of here. How long have we been in this level? Like, actually, like, <laughs> nearly 40 minutes? Oh my gosh. The best part is, like, I did the tutorial level and, uh, four levels in the last stream. And, uh, this, oh my gosh, that dog is, like, legs up. Poor thing. There was an article today in the German media about the USA weakening the labor protection laws, reintroducing child labor. I, that doesn't surprise me, but <laughs> there's so many things, there's so many laws in, I'll say Western countries in general, and it's just like, they weaken one bit and suddenly it's like, whoop, floodgates are opened, <laughs> like, like, you know, children shouldn't really be working, but like, somehow this keeps happening. You know, like, like what's going on? Crazy stuff. Um, the US is... Dude, the U.S. has, like, crazy things as well. I, um... Oh, 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 one, one other thing about the voice actor I just want to mention, because this will be a great segue. Um, uh... Like, just because this guy can't sing doesn't necessarily mean he can't play Kiryu. Uh, also, it doesn't mean someone else can't do the singing voice. Did I get a key? What did I activate? The box, the box, that's of course. Yeah. Um... So, and also, uh, someone would probably yell at me for suggesting this at all, but is AI voice a bad thing if the guy you're making the AI voice of can't normally sing? And he's right there, and you give him the thing until 23 in the evening. Oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stay up too long. Hopefully, hopefully not too long. Um, this room always <laughs> threw me off until I was like, oh yeah, monkey bars, they're back. Yeah, so, uh, to that, I would, I would then segue back to the, the whole US government doing crazy things. They are really, really cracking down on AI stuff because they've realized that, I don't know, like, I'm a, I'm a bit of a, you know, government and big corp are totally, um, not out to, like, get the, the little man, but it's like, you know, it's, a lot of politicians have corporate interests, like every single one of them. So that's my politics of the day. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean. So, um, but they're really cracking down on AI stuff, and I'm like, AI, like all it's gotta be is tasteful. We gotta like, uh, there's some terrible, you know, people stealing other people's content, training like AI models on things that aren't. No one gave permission to train AI models on that kind of stuff, and people should respect that. And then on the other hand, it's like, yeah, but like... You know, you can't say all AI is like... ...immoral or misused or banned at all, like, I don't know, man. Because the only, the only people who benefit from it all being banned and restricted are the massive companies that are... ...sort of pioneering it in the sense that they have lots of computers to do it. Like, OpenAI, you know, they're inventing lots of stuff. They got ChatGPT, cool, but like... I don't know, I want someone else to make their own ChatGPT. That'd be cool. You know? The problem is, that people have is the concept of having these AIs and stuff like that. You know, like, releasing them into a world where people are unsuspecting. We had the same problem with, like, deepfakes. And to some degree, we actually still have that problem. Um, there's a lot of- I've seen some real terrifying, like, people trying to pass off, like, deepfakes as, like, legitimate political propaganda. It's like, oh my gosh, like, at least, just stop- stop, like, slightly before you try to imitate Scarlett Johansson selling your- your- your crypto products. Like, that's it. Just something like that. Um, <laughs> which, uh, which she- she's going full ham on suing whoever's doing that one, which is, like, fair enough. Bay X. Or X Bay. It's like eBay, but. Head out here. We are nearly, very nearly, at the end of the level. This poor guy. Again, I'm just de destroying people. 
These are just feds. Oh, poor feds. I'm trying. I'm trying to give some humanity to the uh, <laughs> to the uh, the semblance of feds. Someone would say, "Well, they're not real feds because they're not glowing or something like that." I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Listen, it's the 90s. It's a very different time. Because, for reference, have you noticed that all these boxes are indicating Majestic 12? It's a very different time. Look at that. They hit some flares in the box. Very nice. Oh. oh yeah, oh, dude, yeah. I, I'm amazed by, like, the US crackdown on AI. Um, and they're not like... It's not like they've... Pass laws that prevent you from running, like, you know, ChatGPT or Llama. Sorry, not ChatGPT, because you can't run that one. But uh, Llama in your house. Like, there's nothing that, that says it's illegal to do that. Um, but uh, I'm very cautious about the whole idea of uh, preventing people from... Why is that stuff there when I turn the camera? That's the... Is that there in the cutscene, but not in the actual level? You see that? That's very strange. Actually, that's the side of the truck. That's the wheels and the rim of the truck. Because if I go back around, <laughs> if I go back around, that's the truck. The truck does not occupy the whole grid space. There is a wall there. That's some non-Euclidean stuff right here. Because now it's going to be the whole width of the wall. Anyway, this is the end of the level. So. <laughs> Isn't that weird? We get a cutscene after both levels in this world. Lara sneak away on the back of a uh, some kind of she she does that in every game. She's been she's had that three for three this time, and she pulls a Coca Cola okay, trademark. Apparently, these people don't know how to drive. Lara just doesn't know how to sit tight. She just just chilling with a Coca Cola trademark. Not very cool. 45 minutes. So, here we are. The we, There's only three levels in this world, but uh, they're, they're all long. So, welcome to Area 51, you know, just casually. First Majestic 12 and boxes everywhere and now Area 51. Uh, this level is full of enemies that will run away and try to access these little guard panels. If they access them, uh, some things will open and or close and or whatever. Uh, if you manage to get that guy right away, you get a fun weapon. We have the MP5. It's got a scope and everything. I don't think you get to scope in this game. I think that's the next game. But very useful to grab this stuff just right now. And you get a bunch of ammo. Can you crack the safe? What's the code? And if we pull this... I don't know what that did. Oh, I tripped. I tripped. It was trip wire. Well, we're gonna have to take out that guy again. See, that's what I mean. I couldn't see the laser. It was too small. And it also wasn't even there when I went through. Seriously, it's not there. I now turn around. It's still not there. Is it there when I pick up the MP5, or is it there when I pull the, the lever? That's probably there when I pull the lever. Very odd. But yeah, enough about politics, even though I've talked about a... a voice actor who's been criticized for... politics reasons and AI, which is always politics, apparently. <laughs> it's always, always a, a thing. Let's talk about business and, uh... This is gonna be... Ugh. I tried, I tried. There's gotta be a way you can get over this, right? Do you just do the roll? No, the roll is not at all effective. Maybe the side jump. 
You might be able to get it with a side jump. Ooh, nope. Touch it with my shoe. Poor Lara, she's she's touching the laser so much. Ooh. It's a very quick killer this one, because there's other lasers later in this level and they don't take you out that quick. I'm hitting that early in the jump, so maybe I gotta stand a bit further right. Uh, it really doesn't look like I'm, I'm gonna make it. Make it. Oh, I landed on it. So, uh, so in terms of economic collapse, uh, let me uh, preface this by saying I may not have been a big uh, Yakuza fan. Like, I don't know my Yakuza. That's not a I don't like Yakuza. That's a I don't you know, engage with it. Oh! Is there really a way to get out of here? Or is this just like, just, just a bait? It's a bait switch. Cause yeah, if I, if I jump forward... Ooh! 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 Let's, let's save, cause I, I, I've done... That closed the gate. No, no, the gate opens with the button. Yeah, okay. So what did that reveal? What did that switch reveal? Must be back out here, right? Must be. Um... But, uh, I am a big, mm, no, I, <laughs> I was a big Overwatch fan. I played Overwatch, uh, day one, uh, back in May 2016, and it was a good time when I first played it. Uh, I really did enjoy, um, the kind of freshness of what I liked about Team Fortress 2, uh, in a bit of a new context. It got some new characters that have different kinds of abilities, and it all kind of flowed nicely. Like, yeah, you know, it needed some small tweaks here and there, and maybe you didn't like how you were forced to play only certain maps for the most part, but yeah, you know, generally, generally it was pretty alright. And Switch maybe does something much later in the level. That might be it. Because I can't see anything else. Like, I was imagining a door here would be open. A door. Um, but no, nothing seems to be open, and this is the actual intended way to continue the level, so I guess we'll just go through here. Uh, count the number of times I crawl in this level, by the way. It's going to be a number greater than, like, 30. It's, it's pretty, pretty gnarly. For example, this is the second bit already. And you gotta watch out for these red lasers, not to be confused with, confused with green laser. Or did I say brainstorm, you know? Uh, you can barely see what's going on over here. Oh, but that laser certainly comes close. I'm gonna light a flare so you can see I'm standing directly on a medkit. And a dead end, but... That's cool, that's fine. So now you gotta crawl forward, and then you'll be low enough to dodge lasers. And we're gonna wait for the laser to come past, because I don't trust this. Of course, in Area 51, they have the most convoluted, like, security system. Just death lasers everywhere. Um, so as a, as a, uh, I enjoyed it Overwatch player, um, in 2018, when they introduced the, oh, this is always the most annoying guy to get as well. Have I got the MP5 equipped? Probably not. I should probably make sure it is. That guy is very dead, but I'm pretty sure... I don't know if there's a way to get that button before he gets to it. Maybe there is. Maybe there is. That's a tricky one. You can release a guy if you want to. There are people in Area 51 who are still under arrest for some reason. Listen, if Lara just, you know, broke her back in a slightly different place, she would have ended up in the facility already instead of having to fight her way through Area 51 and sneak... Find a way on some some Blues Brothers 2000 prison and uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so when Overwatch League was uh, you know introduced in 2018, that was starting to get to the point where I started to dwindle a little bit in my interest in the game. Uh, 2017 felt like a very very uh, fun and fresh year. It felt like oh you know they'd support the game quite a fair bit. Uh, this is the uh, the um, the. <laughs> Was it the villain arc of me when I start to get very, very jaded 
about uh, these kinds of games because uh, Overwatch for its first year had lots of fun events. Overwatch for its second year had the same fun events. And uh, and then they had capture the flag and I kind of had to capture the flag. It doesn't work. It doesn't work with a play account like that. Ah. Not today! You're not pressing that button today. Dude, this MP5 is good fun though. <laughs> if a little bit, you'll be like, hmm, is this still Tomb Raider? I love, I love this, um, how there's like, yeah, there's lots of these rooms all around. So this is what I mean, is it like, I, there's probably a bunch of like rooms where it's like, if you manage to kill the guards before they activate things, then you'll get all these goodies, all these extra things. You know, I'm starting to think these buttons are probably just there to, like, block yourself from, you know, it's like the inside. If, if you get into the room, but the guy closes the door behind you, then you can just reopen it. I love this, um, kind of overhead area. And then I love how, okay, so we're gonna get into this, this bit here. Nah, psych. Now you gotta mono on mono with the big soldiers. Did he press that? I think he did, because he let the dogs out. Come on. Let me go. That's where they went. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, when they introduced Overwatch League, I was like, this is pretty alright. They've put in the effort, they've got castles that seem kind of interesting in, in their own weird ways. Uh, I liked, I was a Houston Outlaws kind of guy. Um, and I, I really did enjoy them. Um, and, uh, but they spent, they were very good for the first stage, and then they started getting a bit rough, and then they got very alright by the end, and I was like, oh, okay. But some of it kind of felt like it tied with the game's meta at the time. The game's meta was all over the place, because they kept introducing some characters, and I remember some controversy of them introducing Brigida, only to then have to kind of take Brigida away, because Brigida was too good, and they don't know how to playtest their video games, because that's not a fun character to go up against, oh my goodness! It's a character whose only purpose in life is to walk up to you and stun you. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> oh, it's fun from the person doing it. Oh, yeah. Playtest the people on the receiving side, bro. <laughs> Where's this guy? Oh, oh, oh. So, uh, ooh, I guess, uh, might not have needed to be in this tunnel bit just now, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Climb out of here. Uh, oh, no, that was the, that was the, the magic button. I think there's just a button around here, like, just, just somewhere. This almost looks like you could be able to, to climb it, but nope. Actually, you know what, I just remembered... Yeah, so, someone who really knows this game is like, what do you mean you just missed the button? Yep, sorry. It's it's on the back of above here. They make these bigger buttons so I wouldn't miss them, and then I still miss them. And that opens one of the grates down below. This level is just like the last one in the sense that it's a large labyrinth of backtracking in lots of various places. Um... And, uh, I, I don't have an easier explanation other than spot the bits that you've seen before and the bits that you haven't seen before and hopefully, hopefully, keep track of the keys and what you can see and what you need keys for. You'll keep finding this MP5 ammo all over the place, so that's cool. Um, anyway, I mentioned Overwatch League because Overwatch League is dead. Uh, Overwatch League has officially, uh, cancelled. They're not running a 2024 season. Uh, so the whole thing is all done. Uh, as a post-mortem, uh, I guess I stopped caring about Overwatch by 2020. It would have been very early 2020, uh, actually no, I think it was 2019 and I sort of like stayed on sort of for the Overwatch League, um, 2019. This is gonna be the worst shot. So Oh, never mind. I feel like Money Penny at the beginning of Skyfall was just like, oh, I can't do it. The only piece of media. 
I love this uh, little glass door down to like see that as well. And uh, it's a it's a bit of an interesting bit. This area is effectively like um, what's the term? Like a 270 degree bend, uh, so you can keep walking around where there is a laser in that direction or a very laser. Watch out! What are you doing? <laughs> Oh my gosh! I think he can dodge this one. Like that. There's a couple of ways of getting through here without necessarily triggering the lasers. And that literally exits there as well. But I don't- I guess I don't need to worry about this because apparently this guy is just on top of this. Can you actually crawl through here? Oh my gosh! That is the thinnest crawl space I've seen. It is just too thin. You gonna get that guy? You gonna go for him? Or is this a, this is a me job? You gotta watch out for these guys. They will take the pot shots at the end. That will uh, alert you about uh, that direction. And as you go over here, you're like, ah yes, I shall now go to this door. I got him, don't worry, I got him. <laughs> Again, if you don't have the MP5 and you're rocking the pistols, because you miss the any weapons really. You probably you probably got a little bit of Deagle left. Probably got a little bit. But, uh, it's a bit painful when you don't have the deagle. You, you probably should have gotten the deagle. But, uh, yeah, no, we're gonna crawl. Crawling in my crawl! We out, we out. Uh, but yeah, Overwatch League sort of represents maybe one of the more sinister aspects of modern video games, which is the, uh, the insane tendency- I think you gotta bolt past this one. Um... Oh no, it's just- it's, it's just a lot. Yeah! Uh, the insane tendency to cater towards competitive players. It seems that competitive players are, one, more likely to be the whales of your game, which is, uh, an unfortunate byproduct of, of, uh, modern video games, I guess, that they're very microtransaction funded. And I don't want to say, like, loaded with microtransactions, because it's like, eh, it's not like they, uh, they wouldn't put microtransactions in the games if they didn't actually sell the microtransactions. It seems to keep working. Um, but also, it's just like, Overwatch was fun, day one. And they definitely were going a bit weird and off the rails Partially, I think, because most of their feedback was coming from competitive players. Which is, I guess, competitive players are more likely to know how to be constructive and tell you something that the game isn't, but also competitive players are not me. I'm a, I'm a plat player. I have plat strats. I've spent 70 bucks on Guild Wars 2 this month for cosmetics. Yeah, I, I mean, like, you know, power to people buying cosmetics. I just wish that there was a place for, like, both, um, you know, kinds of stuff. I, mean, I spent something in the triple digit. Ooh, ooh. Um, so here's your here's your plotting out the level. We have this code clearance disc that we just got off that guy next to this rocket. Um, that room I, I skipped past very earlier is uh, um, where we'll be returning to in a moment. But if you go down here, there is another room. Almost three chaos. Still though, yeah. If you've played if you played a game for that long. Um, you know, I sort of do feel like, yeah, you know, if you like a game that offers you a lot of stuff, you know, don't feel bad about, like, you know, investing in it. What I find kind of, you know, sad is, like, when there is no content and yet people still buy stuff. Uh, this also does not take the code clearance disc. Keep that in mind. We now have two different places for two different keys. Um, and we have a third key that is not either of those. You can't buy competitive advantage in any ways. Yeah, exactly. And, and while, granted, I could say the same thing about Overwatch, um... The, like, my problem is, like, I lose the value in the game itself. Uh, as, as someone who spent the money to buy the game at a retail store, and I have Overwatch on my shelf, 
I find it's less valuable than when I bought it because I can't play Overwatch 1 anymore. I have to play Overwatch 2, the game that feels gimped down and it doesn't have the features that I once enjoyed, like Temple of Anubis. I'm sorry, competitive players, I enjoy that map. And I'm a little bummed that you can only play the game in very, very, you know, specific scenarios. Instead of being rotated in, nah, nah, you can't play it. I'm just saying, Counter-Strike figured that out. They got the active duty and the uh, reserve duty, and both are equally valid. It's just that one is not active duty. That's it. Uh, this room is mean because there are two green lasers across the ground in a cross crisscross shape. And you're supposed to, one, uh, see that, because one of them is legit, like, Zed fighting with the ground. And two, you're supposed to notice that you shouldn't have gone to this room first, because you needed that code clearance disc from that guy earlier. What a, what a bizarre thing. Activating this, uh, uh, uh raises the missiles. It, it's not 100% clear why you did that. But the, the answer is, there's a ladder over there. And awkwardly standing on that conveyor belt is the only way you can reach it. It's it's a bit weird. Uh, also, uh, when I was trying to figure out these levels, um, I I had a mate who has never seen this game before, and he keeps saying like, "Oh, you got to shoot the walls." And I'm like, "Bro, like you can't shoot the walls in this game." You ready? I, how about I go use the pistols? Because that would have been a much more dramatic moment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that in particular, that wall can be shot. Have fun, everyone. Now, now every wall can be a wall you can shoot. This is my favorite kind of secret as well, because it's like, that is a massive drop. I'm gonna, this is like a ladder wall. You go down to the bottom here, and, uh, you gotta, I, I'll call it a save crystal. Um, you're underneath one of the missiles, and there's nothing left to do. You're just gonna go back and snake eater. You're just gonna do that climb back out so um but yeah i'm a little upsetty about uh the state of overwatch and the fact that the game that i once uh bought uh i can't enjoy also just note uh i keep mentioning dark spore and i know i'm probably not even someone who would have enjoyed dark spore but again it's on my shelf and it's a bit of plastic it, it serves as a relic of a of a time period that is completely inaccessible, and Overwatch 1 is, uh, leans towards that, because currently, right now, you know, Overwatch 2 is functionally most of the same game, but only most. And I know, yeah, Temple of the Movies is still there, and I haven't really exactly removed anything, but, uh, they have removed my old Symmetra left click. She was supposed to be super easy to play, if she's too good against high player pro competitive. Tone down the amount of damage she does. But when you're a baby player who doesn't know how to, like, aim, that's, like, a cool thing, you know? Like, why do I take that away from me? So, I don't know. I feel like there's a big problem with uh, newer games and listening only to pro-competitive players. Because um, there's only a certain kind of perspective you'll get out of this. Um, there's actually, there was an article, maybe a hundred? I don't know if it was even, like, a, a proper thing that was even true. But it was, um... Uh... Oh, what was the game? What was the the game itself? The article was saying that they got a lot of Escape from Tarkov streamers to, in a closed session, to play this game. Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. And, uh, basically, they said, uh, they asked them at the end, if this game came out tomorrow, would you play it? Would you buy it? And not a single person raised their hand. And uh, the effect is much worse because I can't recall the, the name of the game. The point is, why are we asking only Escape from Tarkov streamers? Like maybe, maybe, you know, okay, they wanted a very focused group, just specific kind of feedback. Sure. In the grand scheme of things, don't ask only Escape from Tarkov players or streamers even. Don't ask only them their opinion of things because uh, I feel like people who play and dedicate um, their efforts towards... I, my brain wanted to say Stalker, but I don't think it was Stalker. I don't, I don't think it was. Um, so we go through here. What did I pick up? I picked up the Hangar Access Key. Yes. So uh, skip that ladder. We're not doing that ladder yet. This would be a great spot to save the game as well, by the way. 
I'm saving less and less, but I still feel like I save like 15 times a level. Pop the hangar access key in. And the door opens, revealing... Uh, a very easy kill. Uh, this... It's a bit of a terrifying part of the map for me. I am very, very, uh, afraid of electric train tunnels because it's very claustrophobic kind of sitting around the outside like this. I'm cool being in a, like, a regular rail train tunnel? Cool. Sure, but, like, when it's, when there's a giant massive rail that I just can't deal with, it's like, <laughs> You know what I mean? So, but yeah, uh... Now, not to say Overwatch League is necessarily a bad thing, because I kind of like the idea of taking, you know, sportifying a game. Adding all the fun elements of what makes, uh, televised sports great. The personalities, the plays, the, the commentary, everything, really. Um, pressing that button, by the way, opens a door. Another door. Um, that's just, like, up here? Also, I think that train is, wasn't there before. And if it wasn't, okay. But, uh, this ladder is here. Actually, I guess the train probably wasn't there before. Look at that, I got a shotgun. I was just chilling in here. You gotta do this fun jump right here onto the train. Oh, there we go. And then you just got a spot with your, uh, limited camera sight that you can jump up here. And, uh, as I saw someone refer to as your best Crash Bandicoot depression. Because you get to do the monkey bar climbs, so... Uh, but yeah, no, I don't know, I don't know. There's probably, like, bits of Overwatch League I really liked, and... To some degree as well, uh... We've got, uh... A bit more of a, a televised... Presence of actual sports, um... Not because of Overwatch League, but... Oh, oh, I'm sitting in the lake. I might as well kill myself. If you touch, um, the rail, you die of electricity, but also that was a bit of a drop, so... That's why I saved here, because I don't trust- I don't trust myself here. Um... Oh, zoom! <laughs> Climbing on the monkey bars. Okay, let's see if I- oh. Ooh, okay, we're good. You just gotta get, like, here, because for some reason it's, like, a little bit further than you'd expect. And then you're good. And then you're good. We drop down, and... oh, I thought there was a... Oh my gosh, I'm blind! There's a rail, there's a rail right there! Oh. Remember On a Rail from Half-Life, the game that came out the exact same year as this one? Just thought you'd like to know that one. Um, but yeah, I guess we pour one out to Overwatch League, because it is, it did kind of... It was very emblematic of an era. Um, but it is certainly... Uh, another peg of perhaps the, um, the slow decay of Overwatch. Uh, a game that once was a game for everyone and is now a game for some people. Hi there. That guy is another jerk who goes ahead and tries to activate a panel very, very far away up this ramp. So I'm glad I've got the MP5, because uh, that, that made that a bit easier. I've also got the shotgun, I could just be using the shotgun, but... I don't know, the MP5's fun. I think all he does is he actually just triggers like one other enemy as well. I don't think he actually does that much. Uh, this is a fun laser corridor where you've just got to actively keep avoiding it. Uh, you can crawl under this one. They changed the color of it just to let you know that yes, it's a, little, it's a little bit higher than the others. And uh, we got a door to our left. But you can spot in there. Ooh, ooh, what are we looking at? Go through more Majestic 12 boxes. I didn't even realize, by the way, until before the stream, and I, I know I use it as the, um, the, the tweet title. Um, I didn't realize that Majestic 12 was actually a thing, because I knew they were in their tanks, and I thought it was just like a conspiracy group. And the answer is, um, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah well, it's probably a conspiracy, um, or, or a group that exists uh, as part of a conspiracy theory, but 
Majestic. <laughs> yeah, this, this, I should have. I should have clarified. <laughs> like, uh, Majestic Twelve is uh, apparently the name of the uh, federal, uh, the F. Well, yeah, like a federal organization uh, around the acquisition of um, effectively extraterrestrial pieces and, and things like that. Um, I think it said it was like declared during the Truman presidency, so like in the late forties. Um, and, uh, there's a document all about it, and the FBI eventually said, this is completely bogus. It's, it's, it's really not true. Like, I, I, apparently this one guy signed the document and he wasn't even in the country at the time, and, yeah, in the, in the 40s you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so, there you go. Uh, in Deus Ex, uh, it's sort of, uh, more overhanded than just that it's like majestic 12 is sort of this kind of shadow organization that um effectively becomes like an information arm of the government so uh um at least i'm pretty sure that's that's my interpretation of it uh dude there's so many there's so many groups uh in in, in deus ex but uh well worth a play well worth a play Kind of interesting that two IDOS games from this time period mention Majestic 12. I don't know, seems just kind of interesting. Very annoyingly, about this section here, you see that I had to... Oh, watch out. You see that I had to hit both these buttons and it opens that door? Um, yeah, there's, the, there's two doors and a pit in the middle, and uh, they're both time-based. Though, uh, it was supposed to be what, uh, a shocked what as to the fact that one group of, from Deus Ex... Uh, most groups in Deus Ex, um... Well, most things in Deus Ex are directly based on a conspiracy theory, and so there's probably some semblance of uh, things existing all over the place. Like, for example, I didn't even realize the Trilateral Commission is was a thing, and then it's like, yeah, it's, it's literally a group of wealthy people in various countries, like, like grouping together. The effects of the Trilateral Commission you know, pro probably not as wild as uh, what conspiracy theories would lead you to believe. But it's like, yeah, it's like you read up on it. It's like, yeah, like the fact that there is a named group consisting of so many important, like wealthy people at that time period is a very, very bizarre thing these days when it's like, you know, lots of lots of politicians at least oh, try to be and, and 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 business people try to be very squeaky clean and uh it's just very curious that like back then it's like oh no it's fairly documented you know it probably isn't true these days either i don't know why do i keep ending up on politics topics why does this keep it's because i'm in area 51 and i have to keep talking about the aliens and stuff like that this is a magical room. You may be thinking, okay, five switches, what's the pattern? The pattern is, you pull all of them. Uh, the camera will pan away, showing that you did something when you pulled one of the switches that did a thing. And if you pull the other switches, I don't think anything happens. But you just need to pull the right three switches at some point. So nothing happens with that switch. But then you, then you pull this one and then it's like... Oh, look, the door open. I think that's it. You just pull all three and that door opens. Let's pull this one for good measure. So, yeah. I think, yeah, like, I don't know, the five switches seems like an infamous kind of room because it's like, it implies that there's a greater puzzle, but there's not at all. It's just five switches, so. Let's climb the way back in. Fortunately, the door opens for us. And we're back out. No key, but we did... You know, pull some switches and things like that, so... There we go, we're all good. Uh, we're very close to two hours on the stream. I'm pushing my way, we're getting to the end of the world, but... <laughs> the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Not only is it a politics stream, it's a singing stream, apparently. <laughs> I'm going out of my way to, like... I should actually make a YouTube playlist of, like... Because every single stream I do is like the title of the stream uh also on twitch is a is a song title and um i feel like this one is very very generic in the sense of there's probably a bunch of songs called the same thing it's up to you to figure out what is the linking element between all the song titles in 
the stream names for a game. Uh, usually it's pretty obvious, like there's, there's usually just like one line or one word that's in all the titles. But this time I've gone a little bit further. A little bit further. Which will probably be made very obvious when I make a playlist, but... Uh, Days by the Kinks. Ooh, is there a kink song? I was thinking, for this one, I was thinking Days by, um, uh, Television. The Kinks would be pretty good too, yeah. Um, but there's a specific link. There's a specific link. Um, I should do some more fun stuff like that. Alright, now, you can spot there, someone left a keycard on top of this UFO. This is a very, very curious jump here. It's probably a better way of doing that, but I don't know, I kind of like that way. So you can land on this ledge up here. And, uh, now what we gotta do is just drop down, and now we're standing on a UFO. You know, as you do. You're in Area 51, of course you gotta have a UFO. I love how fantastical this section is, and I kind of like how... Um, and I've not been talking about the game too much other than just constantly calling it, you know, Labyrinthian. <laughs> um... But I actually kind of love how every single one of these worlds has a very significant set piece at the end of the worlds. Like, you, you know, we start in the, the desert. Nothing really fancy. Uh, you'll be pleased to know that this is no. not the item that you use here. There is, a, there is a panel here. And you just have to backtrack. There is no alternative which is very unfortunate and if i'm gonna if i'm gonna say how great the level design is in places i'm going to rip into the fact that you gotta backtrack so much here you have to remember that this you remember at the beginning when i said oh i had the cd and there were two locks that involved different keys to that cd this is the second one of them you, oh whoops <laughs> whoops <laughs> Let's, uh, let's, let's load. Whoops, I wasn't paying attention. Um, you just have to remember that, like, harken back to basically 40 minutes ago. And just remember that there was that one key that we did not use. That one, or that one slot for a key. You can jump over that. That's not a bad one to jump over. Uh, and unfortunately, yeah, there's no linkage. There's no, like, kind of hint of, like, hey, yeah, you know, you can go back to the early part of the level. Nope, you just have to wander all the way back, and they don't even spawn any enemies or anything. And yes, that, that involves jumping over that train rail, climbing up this ladder, we're gonna have to do the Crash Bandicoot sequence in reverse. I'm very certain there's no, you know, door that leads back. You just, yeah, that's one of the rougher parts of the level design, I'm sorry guys. I'm sorry, fellas. Talking about aliens, I just had to reload because I came into a system and mistook some aliens for other aliens <laughs> and immediately opened fire. Xenos must be purged. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> you got you can't mistake the aliens though. You can't you can't friends and foes. You gotta you gotta have your notes. Do you have to like write down like what what the tell is for like different aliens or is it like pretty pretty obvious which ones you shoot and which ones you don't? It's just instinct making sure you don't shoot the wrong ones. Uh, so now we're on the train car. Fortunately, uh, you can just jump off the side and then you're all good. You're at the end. Very obvious. All right, all right. So it's just a bit of instinct. Yeah, instinct's always the worst when you accidentally just like. Yeah, different ship color. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's different ship. And I don't know. I, I've sometimes been like that, where it's just like I, I, I'll just, I don't know. Like my brain sees the object well before I see the color, and I'm not, I by well before I mean sort of before. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not like I can really picture the object without the color, but you know what I mean. Um, but I started and was like, wait. Who is this? This wasn't the bird people, and it was indeed the crab people. You gotta watch out. You can't. You can't shoot the. You can't shoot the crab people. They're your friends. They're your crustacean friends. Okay. Uh, here is a fun moment of the game. Um, so uh, for some odd reason, um, you press this button, and uh, this rocket just launches. You have to um, be standing in this room. So that you don't get burnt by rocket flame. Uh, amazingly, the rocket flame doesn't go 
that far in the room it stops at some point even if you don't close the door you know that's why i reloaded because i had not immediately opened on me and we're blue on the radar but we're actually the enemy we lose fanatics <laughs> i would praise the crab they've declared me a heretic yesterday Ooh, gonna watch out launching the missile again seems kind of arbitrary but uh do note that must mean hey there's something involving that room unfortunately that room is pretty close so have i commented on lara's outfit she's wearing just like a blank tank tank top and camouflage pants they'll never see her she's wearing camouflage so the rocket has launched from this room if you recall and uh the ladder that's all the way over here actually you now have the ability to go all the way up to the top because there's no rocket now i would tell you more about the game it's all about slowly uncovering the mysteries of the galaxy and i would spoil that for you and unsuspecting viewers ah keep the spoilers free if you don't want to don't want to reveal the secrets but I always love these space games because it is all about like secrets and things like that. This is a very awkward jump, but the storytelling is good where you can think back and then understand previous events on a deeper level. That's always good fun when you got kind of deep writing like that. Uh, so if I jump back here, I think you can make this. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird grab, but it works out. And then for some other reason, I just start hearing someone and I think it's because there's a guy just like up there can see me a little bit but it doesn't really know how to hit me so hey. oh oh Lara Lara you're taking forever to climb up Lara you... it's because I'm not on the side there we go wiggle over there we go where is he at <laughs> How many kills 21? That is 21 federal agents that are no more because Lara Croft decided to sneak into Area 51. She didn't even do the Naruto run when she ran in. That's probably why they didn't succeed. Everyone likes a good old red laser room, right? And you can you can hear it. You can just be like, ah yes. It's that. This is this is a terrifying one. These are all terrifying. All these lasers are terrifying. You know what, actually, this made me realize as well how much Tomb Raider 5 blurs itself in my mind because it ends with a... It's not, it's not a government building, but it is a building with futuristic things in it. And, uh... It's like, yeah, it's another, it's another bit like that. And I guess that's the problem is that at some point... You know, how many places can Lara Croft go to before it feels a little a little dull? We'll see. We'll see. I'm having a good time though. Oh. He turn oh, because oh, I'm out of ammo. Oh, that's a bit awkward. That is a bit awkward. Get down from there. That guy on the top needs to needs to be taken down. Most of these enemies don't drop stuff, even when they had guns. Uh, I love this little bit of water just to give you the semblance that you could break out, but nope, nope, you can't break out just yet. Also, given that people actually went to Area 51 that one time, um, like, I know it's a government building, they can't actually, you can't go into Area 51, but it's just like, you think they'd have like, a museum or something like close by. I guess it is kind of in the in the middle of nowhere though, isn't it? <laughs> like, you know, you could you could figure out where it is, but all right, let's get a different weapon because I've burned through all that ammo. So, uh, or at least I got a little more. But we got the digs. We got the digs. Hi there. They do take a bit of bullets though. But this guy drops a CD. I hope it's. Um, dark side of the moon. I don't know. I was just like, what's a... <coughs> what's a thing on CD? Why, yes, Pink Floyd. The most cd -able, you know, album out there. Uh, so with that CD and uh, that switch pulled, 
Uh, do we go back this way? No, we don't go back this way. Don't don't make the 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 mistake of going back that way because look at that a, a, a pit is visible and the best part we go down this walkway and that's right even more lasers. Remember when I said count the number of times I crawled in this level? We are currently 38 minutes of me not dying at all in this level. And, uh... It's still... It's... They're still crawling, because you gotta... You gotta duck here. Oh... <laughs> the crawling will never end. This is a crawling level. Oh, I don't think there's anything up. I think it does stop there. But, uh... Amazingly... That's right, they connected the rooms. This is back at the train. We don't have to do the, the train bit to get back up here. We're on the right side. But this level, this, I mean, this and the previous level, they snake around so much. There's so... There is a lot you've got to keep track of in order to, like, understand this level. And I would definitely say it's, uh... It's very tricky to follow. Not tricky to like, get through. There's not a lot of really, like, hard jumps, but it is very, um, a little, a little cryptic. And just, like, you just gotta understand where all the places you go to. Finally, trust me, this is the last key of the level. The code clearance. Activate this, and it opens a few doors, including, uh, huh. Okay. Uh, Lara decides, Why well, yes, I shall casually chill with the alien. I'm surfing with the alien. <laughs> this thing is really large. Legit, that's it's a massive boy. I would be absolutely terrified. Like, one, if aliens exist, because the, the... Like, legit, are they actually going to be peaceful? Nah, man. I don't know what you're doing. We'll just send some videos, Skype with them. Maybe it'll be a bit safer. And two, what if they're massive? I would be, I'm terrified of anything that's really larger than me. And I'm a big guy. Uh, that UFO is open, by the way, but. I uh, always ask the question, would we be peaceful? Oh, heck no, heck no. I mean, I mean, we'd probably, we'd probably like, I, I think we definitely wouldn't shoot it down like day one because we don't we don't launch you know offensive like weapons. Also, they have killer whales in Area Fifty One because why not? Look at it, it's so cute. I love how these are the only killer whales in the whole game as well. <laughs> it's just here. Yeah. It's very cool. I like it. And uh, and a big lad with zero genitalia. How do they reproduce? They're probably 3D printed or something. Um, now that orca tank is very curious. We have enough examples of how the humans do it. Oh, exactly. Exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, but there's also, yeah, there's, there, there's also, um... Uh... Yeah, like, I, I don't know if we'd shoot down the aliens first go, but definitely it's like, yeah, the moment any alien is just, like, attacking us, it's like, I don't know, we'd be, like, crazy superstitious. Because here's the thing, is that we're currently at the point where all aliens are the same, even though certainly they might not be. But it's just like, I don't know, when an alien comes by, it's like, nah, man, all aliens are going to be them now. All aliens, all aliens will be the... <laughs> Like, they'll, they'll just be like a weird, like, sound, you know, unpronounceable sound. The Orbulons, the, the, um, what's another fun alien in, in media? The Xenomorphs. They got Xeno in the name, they're, that's cheating. Now, if you wander all the way around here after, like, revealing, after pulling that switch, uh, this will be a fun jump. This will be a very fun jump, but this wall... This door just casually opens up. Uh, oh, you gotta do a running jump. You gotta run for that one. <laughs> this is the secret I know of. How many secrets have I gotten in this level? There's only... There's three. Okay, so... Listen, I don't know all the secrets in this game, but I definitely know a good number in here. This is a secret. Uh... The ultimate of the, the laser hallways. Because you've just got to 
time a jump. Oh, sort of worked. Drop down, and voila! We are in the Orca Pit, where they will proceed to nibble on my face! And again, it's another secret that's just there to get you a save crystal. And you can hear the Orcas. But yeah, I'm pretty sure... Actually, do they kill you? No, they're friendly. They're friendly. Listen, my, my, my mildly irrational fear of big animals still sort of applies to like, you know, herbivores and things that wouldn't necessarily try to kill me because 100%, like, I don't know, I, I don't trust the elephant to, to be careful. I don't trust the elephant to be like, you know, too careful around a little human. A little human is just his little play thing. So. Now, unfortunately, with a secret, uh, there's, I don't think there's any way to actually, like, get down, other than breaking your... Elephants will be careful. True. True, true. So, you just gotta break your legs when you drop down there. It's kind of, kind of weird, but sure. Um, so, uh, now we can finally enter the UFO, which, it's not that, I mean, it's not that big. It's just like a little, you know, little thing here. But uh, interestingly, it's like, okay, well, like, it sort of looks like there'd be a slope here, right? And I, I, I love this. Every single game needs to do this. It's like, okay. You could sort of feel it in the level design already, but it's like, hmm, what's that sound? And then you come back and it's like, oh, they close you in, first of all. But uh, also, it's like, okay, why are we going up another floor? How are we going up another floor? That thing was tiny. And, uh, yeah, uh, casually non-Euclidean level design of the UFO. And, of course, it's very spongy because aliens love their crazy tactile spongy floor. On your way around here. I'll be, uh, another... Another fed. He's not glowing, though, so... Because I don't have my Ford model, uh, my Ford F one fifty. What's the? I was gonna say Model T. That's the. That's the wrong car. Climb up here. Look at this wonderful glowy stuff. Very very cool. And that's the the wonderful goods. But just before you grab it, take out the last few feds. They're just chilling here. And we've done it. We've wandered into <laughs> the spaceship uh, where I can only describe to as... So th the meteorite fragments that we're looking for are all in... Like, you know, various locations around the Earth because the people at the time uh, of the, the Great Explorers took them and then suddenly experienced uh, you know, tragedy, uh, or, or some, you know, unexpected death. Um, somehow, this one ended up in Nevada, and inside an alien spaceship, which conveniently is still parked at Area 51. That, I think, is the most spectacular way that this whole thing kind of builds up into this Wonderful set piece. Unfortunately, you don't get to shoot any aliens, but hey, you know, like I don't think we have to understand the aliens. So grab the piece, which is not named correctly in this game. They accidentally used the wrong name. Um, and we're done. We finish the world in fairly record time because I swear this took me much longer the first go when I had no idea what I was doing. We now have the choice of the two remaining worlds, the South Pacific Islands or London. I shall choose the South Pacific Islands, where we start off, uh, immediately, uh, sailing down a river, and I shouldn't <laughs> load the game, we're sailing down a river, Lara has changed her outfit once again, because we're not in Area 51, she doesn't need camo, we're gonna be swimming a lot, so she needs to wear the, the shortest pants imaginable, actually, I'm pretty sure they were shorter in the second game, but... Uh, we got a wonderful, a wonderful beach and tropical environment awaiting us. Uh, but until then, I think, I think we're all good. 
We've, you know, like, I know it was only three levels, but it's like, man, those three levels were three levels, man. That's some serious stuff, so. Uh, I'm pretty sure every world, the fourth level isn't actually that long, so. Hopefully, we don't have a risk of a three-hour stream at some point, but definitely not today. With that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you stuck around all this time, you can follow here on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube. Uh, where you'll see the VODs, uh, as well as that Shadow Man bonus video that I still haven't released yet, but uh, I've, uh, I've, just been, I've just been burning my time, and uh, I'll get to it. Don't worry. Uh, and yeah, if you, if you miss any bit of this, just check out the VOD. It'll be there uh, in slightly higher quality, as it always is. Um, and uh, But yeah, no, that's, that's all good. I know the remaster's coming out soon. Um, see ya, blub. Have a good one. Uh, well, it's not coming out that soon. It's in February. Lots of things. Don't take anything I've said to stream that seriously. <laughs> I don't know, I've rambled so much about music and politics. What a what a bizarre what a bizarre twist of uh, twist of things to talk about. Barely any video games, who knows? So anyway, with that, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and uh Don't don't steal uh FBI artifacts. At least without their permission. You can steal it with their permission. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know how this works. See ya, fellas.